Chapter 1, Section 6. In our first example, we want to solve and graph this inequality. We want to solve for y. Solving an inequality for a variable is a lot like solving an equation for a variable. We want to do the same thing to both sides of this inequality in order to isolate our variable. So we're going to start by moving that 9 to the other side of the inequality. We'll add 9 to both sides in order to leave our y term on the left. 11y is greater than 13 plus 9, which is 22. And then the last step is dividing both sides by this positive 11. So we're left with y is greater than 22 divided by 11 is 2. So our solution is an infinite number of solutions. y is greater than 2. We graph the solution to an inequality because it is an infinite number of values and it's best expressed on a number line. So we'll have our number line with equally spaced uh, tick marks. We'll label the positives to the right and negatives to the left. 0 or the origin in the middle. Now I want to locate that critical value 2 on the number line and I want to put an open circle at 2 indicating that y can't equal 2, it's only greater than 2. So values greater than 2 are going to be to the right, so I'm going to shade this number line to the right of 2 and I'm going to shade the arrow 2 to indicate that it goes on and on forever. So this is our graph of the solution to this inequality y is greater than 2. Okay, in this example, we're going to solve and graph for, uh, this inequality for x. We have um, x and constant terms on both sides of the inequality, so we want to get our x terms on one side and our numbers on the other. So I'm going to start by moving our x terms to the left. I'll subtract uh, 10x from both sides of the inequality. 7x minus 10x is negative 3x, so we have negative 3x plus 9 on the left. That's greater than or equal to, we're left with negative 12 on the right. Don't forget the negative sign. Okay, we moved our variable terms to the left, so we want to move this constant term to the right. So we'll subtract 9 from both sides. So negative 3x is greater than or equal to a total of negatives on the right, negative 21. And the last step is to undo the multiplication and divide both sides by negative 3. But we have to remember that when we divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, we have to reverse the order of the inequality. So it becomes x is less than or equal to rather than greater than or equal to and negative 21 divided by negative 3 is 7. So our solution, our infinite number of solutions, is x is less than or equal to 7. And on the number line, we'll locate 7. That's our critical value. And I'll put a solid dot at 7 this time because equals is part of the inequality. And x um, can equal 7. It's also less than 7, so I'm going to shade values to the left of 7. And again, I'm going to shade the arrow to indicate that it'll go on and on forever to the left. In this example, to receive an A, Sashi must have at least a 90 average on her last three exams. Her average is the quantity S plus 174 divided by 3, where S is her final exam score. Describe the final scores that will give her an A. So we want to set her average S plus 
174, that quantity divided by 3. We want to set it, since she must have at least a 90 average uh, on her last year exams to receive an A, we want to set this greater than or equal to 90. She can't have less than 90 and still get an A. This is the inequality that we want to solve. So the first thing I would do would be to clear this e inequality of that denominator. I'd multiply both sides by 3. Now that's a positive 3, so we don't have to reverse the order of the inequality. Okay, on this side, 3's will cancel, and we're left with our sum, s plus 174. S plus 174 is greater than or equal to 3 times 90, which is 270. And the last step then is going to be to subtract 174 from both sides of this inequality. So S is greater than or equal to 96. So she must, Sashi must score greater than or equal to 96 on that final exam in order to receive an A uh, for the course. In this example, we want to solve and graph a compound inequality. This is an AND statement, an AND statement in shortcut form. It says that negative 9 is less than t plus 4 and t plus 4 is less than 10. To solve an AND statement, we want to isolate t in the middle. So we're going to subtract 4 from all three areas of this compound inequality. So negative 9 and negative 4 is a total of negative 13. In the center, we're just left with t. And on the right, 10 minus 4 is 6. So values of t are between negative 13 and positive 6. So we'll make our number line and we'll graph this compound um, inequality solution. So let's see, I'll put 0 here, and I'll go 4, 8, 12 to the right, and I'll go negative 4, negative 8, negative 12 to the left. <coughs> and I'll locate these critical values, negative 13, uh, negative 13 is right here. And we want an empty dot at negative 13, because equals is not part of our inequality. And at 6, which is right here, I also want an empty dot. Now t is less than 6, so I'm shading to the left. And t is greater than negative 13, so I'm shading to the right at negative 13. So what I have is some center of the number line as my graph values that are between negative 13 and positive 6 are the solution to this compound inequality. This is a compound inequality, but it's an OR statement. OR statements cannot be written in shortcut form. So we have two separate inequalities, two simple inequalities. 6x plus 9 is less than or equal to 3, or 3x minus 8 is greater than 13. So we want to solve these inequalities separately and then graph our solution. So to get x alone in this first inequality, I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides. So I have 6x is less than or equal to 3 minus 9, that's negative 6. And dividing both sides by 6, I get x is less than or equal to negative 1. I divided by a positive, so I didn't have to reverse the order of the inequality. Okay, or on the other side, to solve for x, I need to add 8 to both sides of the inequality. 
So that's going to leave 3x is greater than 21. And dividing both sides by 3, I get x is greater than 7. So this is our solution. x is less than or equal to negative 1, or x is greater than 7. When we graph that solution on the number line, instead of some center of the graph between two critical values, we're going to get the ends of the graph on either side of two critical values. So let's see what it looks like. I'll get my labels. Um, let's go this direction. Okay, we still locate our critical values, negative 1, which is right here. Here we want a solid dot because x can equal negative 1. It's also less than negative 1. So we're shading to the left, this end of the graph. Or x is greater than 7. Here's 7. We want an empty dot at 7 because equals is not part of the inequality. And x is greater than 7, so we're shading to the right of 7. So for an or statement, the solution when graphed is the ends of the graph. For an and statement, it was the center of the graph. For your workout, you want your heart rate in beats per minute to be not less than 130 and not more than 160. Write an inequality for your target heart rate. So let's let R be our target heart rate. We want that to be between 130 and 160. So we'll just write an inequality to indicate that it's between 130 and 160. Now it could equal 130 because it's not less than 130, but it could equal 130. It's not more than 160, but it could equal 160. So here's the inequality that would describe that target heart rate. It's greater than or equal to 130, and it's less than or equal to 160. Include in your notes of this video guided practice problems 2 through 12, even problems only, found on pages 41 to 44 of your textbook.